guys, welcome back to Nerd Hell. My name's Manny, and today I have my February, March, and April book and comic haul. So obviously I took a little bit of a break from YouTube and in that time I did not stop buying books and comics so this is going to be quite a large haul. Um, that thumbnail that I have doesn't even really do it justice. I couldn't really lift all the things I had and uh, make it in frame. So I just want to warn you this is going to be a little bit of a longer video. As I did last time I'm going to leave a link right here. If you're just interested in the book haul, click it. Go right to the books. I don't mind. I'm sure nobody else does either. Um, but if you're interested in comics, stick around. It's going to be quite a lot of stuff to go through so we should probably get started. Okay so the first thing I got was Through the Woods by Emily Carroll. Emily Carroll is a British illustrator so this is a anthology collection of horror suspense thriller comics. Um, if you feel like that kind of sounds like something you'd be interested in and you're not quite sure you want to pick up a book yet, go look at her website emilycarrollthink.com, I'm not sure. I'll leave a link in the description below. Um, and she has a bunch of short um, web comics on her website that are very indicative of what you're going to find in this book. They are creepy, they are dark, they are mystical, they are very um, kind of in like modern illustration style I would say. She has this really cool kind of like creepy color and shape sense. Oh my gosh. I already read this. It took me like maybe half an hour, maybe 45 minutes to get through just because I was taking my time. It was really, really creepy and I almost wish I had saved it and read it like in the dark alone at night. Maybe not. They are pretty scary. But these are really, really cool and if you're thinking you want to change things up a bit for yourself and read something a little bit different, Emily Carroll, Through the Woods, creepy, creepy stuff definitely the way to go. Alright, moving on. The next thing I picked up was East of West Volume 5, written by Jonathan Hickman, um, drawn by Nick Dragota. If you have been on my channel or listening to the podcast I have with my friend Will, Get a Cat, Get a Horse, link in the description below, you will know um, that East of West is my favorite thing that I'm reading right now, at least the, my favorite thing that's ongoing that I'm picking up. It is an amazing, amazing series. It's sort of like Game of Thrones, future alt-America sci-fi-ish. It's great. It's really, really cool. This is the fifth volume. I haven't read it yet. I'm kind of saving it for when I'm really, like, feeling like I need to read something really good because I know it's going to be a good long while until another volume of this comes out and those, <laughs> those weights between volumes is really killing me. So I haven't read it yet. I'm definitely going to soon. Really, really cool series. Check it out if you haven't already. All right. Um, <laughs> this next purchase is a little bit embarrassing. Um, I'm getting to the point in my collecting experience where I'm starting to see things go out of print and it's really starting to scare me. Um, this on in stock, in stock trades, was not being sold, was listed as um, not available and so I panicked and I ran over to Amazon and I picked it up and after like a day after I bought it I went back on in stock and it was back in stock and for like five or six dollars less than I bought it for on Amazon. So just to get it out of the way, I got Batman Nightfall Volume 3 because <laughs> I thought it was going out of print. It's totally not and you should definitely get it on Instock Trades if you're going to buy it because it's like way, way cheaper. Um, I have it now. I don't think I'm going to return it. It's too much of a hassle for five bucks and I'm going to have to pay for like a box or something anyways. Um, so I guess I'm going to be collecting Nightfall 1 and 2 soon. I knew I wanted to get this series. I knew that it was kind of a famous run and I wanted to read it eventually, but I didn't, I don't think I would have picked it up quite so soon if I had known I had a little bit more time. I probably would have picked up something else. Whatever. Okay, so this next stuff is really, really cool. I got volume 1 and volume 2 of Jason's Aaron, Jason Aaron's run on Thor, God of Thunder. These are the large, oversized hardcovers. The first volume is issues 1 through 11, and it comprises the Gore the God Killer run. And then the second volume is 12 through 25, and it's the second half on his run of Thor um, before he um, transitioned to Lady Thor, or just Thor, I think, is the title under which it's running right now. It might be Goddess of Thunder. I don't know, but he transitioned to Lady Thor right after this run. These two volumes comprise the entirety of his run. I have read volume one, volume one, <laughs> and I can tell you that it is really, really fabulous. I haven't read a lot of stuff in continuity with Marvel or DC, but from the stuff I have read, 
this has been my favorite thing. Um, he has such a way with these this kind of like hulking um, imbecile a little bit <laughs> of a character, and he does a really really great job. It is full of action and high stakes and really cool like fantasy elements. Really really awesome stuff. Definitely check it out if you haven't. Jason Aaron, Thor, God of Thunder. This next purchase is not my fault. <laughs> it is Will's fault from Nerdventures. I do a podcast with him. He knew how much I loved Jonathan Hickman, Hickman's run on East of West, how it's my favorite thing I'm reading right now. And he mentioned that he almost finished completing his collection of all the Jonathan Hickman stuff in Marvel and how he had heard from other people that it's a really cool run but you kind of have to have everything in his run and read it all together in order to get the most out of it and i was like oh that sounds cool i would love to see what jonathan hickman can do in continuity at marvel and i would love a sprawling epic like superhero type adventure um and i believe his run goes through fantastic four oh probably secret warriors fantastic four uh avengers and new avengers infinity and secret wars Secret Wars was on in stock, and I think it was like an extra 5% off, and I was like, oh, I'll start collecting Jonathan Hickman. So I bought it, and then I did a little bit more research as to what I was going to have to collect after that in order to start at the beginning and read all the way through, and it's going to be sort of a nightmare to get it all together. You can expect a lot more Jonathan Hickman Marvel Universe stuff coming in future hauls, because now that I've gotten this sucker, which looks really cool... I definitely want to complete it. I think that would also make like a really good series, like uh, doing like a couple of videos, like reading through it in like a month or something and doing like a video every so often and talking about it. So yeah, Secret Wars, Jonathan Hickman, Marvel Continuity, what a headache to get all of his stuff together. <laughs> okay, so the next two things I got were Preacher, um, Volume 1, uh, Garth Ennis and Steve Dillon, and then Preacher volume two. There are six hardcovers comprising the entirety of the run uh, by Ennis and Dylan on Preacher. Um, as some of you know, as most of you probably know, uh, the show adaptation of it is coming out in AMC at the end of this month and I really wanted to pick up the comics and read them before the show came out just because I've heard such good things about this series. Um, I'm about halfway through volume one right now and I don't know, it's really good. I don't know what I expected. I knew it was going to be kind of out there, I guess you could say. I'm only halfway through the first volume. I don't know what I think about this series yet. But anyway, the cast for just having read the first half of the first volume, like the casting for the show is perfect and I am really excited to see it. I'm excited to pick up the rest. I feel like I have a lot of like open-ended stuff on my shelf and I need to start like tying up loose ends and collecting the rest of things. Okay, speaking of series that are now going to be open-ended on my shelf, I got volume one, volume two, volume three of Why the Last Man by Brian K. Vaughn and Pia Guerrero. I don't know. I, I, I don't know, guys. Please forgive me. So I really like um, Brian K. Vaughn. I'm a big fan of Saga, and I read the first volume of... Runaways, and I really, really enjoyed that. I've heard nothing but fabulous things about Why the Last Man, and seeing these hardcovers, I was like, okay, time to take the plunge. Um, so I, there's two more, I believe. There is. There's definitely two more, and then I'll have the entire series. I'm gonna pick those up soon. I'm sick of having all these open-ended series on my shelf that, like, have all the comics out, but I just haven't picked them up yet because I keep starting new things. <laughs> so those will be coming really, really soon. I'm really excited to read this. I've heard there's a few references to Preacher in it because Brian K. Vaughn's a big fan of Garth Ennis. Um, so I might hold off on these until I finish Preacher and then read these. I haven't heard that they're, like, essential or, like, a big deal. Like, if you miss the references, they're gonna, like... I don't know, ruin your reading of this, but I have the first two volumes of Preacher, so I might as well finish that series before I jump into this, right? Does it matter? Tell me in the comments. What do you think? Okay, so this next thing is an omnibus. It is Green Lantern by Jeff Johns, volume three. For those of you who've been paying attention, you will have seen in my first ever haul that I hauled volume one of this. That is right, I do not have volume two. I got this because it was an extra 5% off on InStock because it was the first week it was going to be released and I was like, huh, an extra five, 10 bucks? Why not? So I picked it up. 
I definitely will not be reading this until I get volume 2, but volume 2 is a pretty reasonable price right now, so I'm probably going to pick it up pretty soon and make my way through the rest of the series. I've already read volume 1, and I really, really enjoyed it, and I'm excited to have another omnibus in my collection. It is really heavy, I'm going to put it down now. <laughs> okay, last thing, yet another omnibus. It is Ecstatic by McGilligan and Allred, and then Dragota and Cook. I don't know who does what on these. I'm assuming the last three are artists. So coming around again to something going out of print, this is no longer being offered on in stock and is going out of print. I knew it was something I wanted to pick up. From what I understand, it's kind of a weird um, anomaly in the X-Men universe that you can read this on its own from what I've heard. And from what I've heard about it, it's like a, a team of mutants who are put together to be kind of like the PR, like firm thing? Not firm, but like the PR team for Mutant Kind, like they they become like pop icons. Um, and just flipping through this volume, the art in it is really cool and interesting and different. Not something you really see um, in the X-Men universe, or at least I haven't seen in the X-Men universe. It seemed like a cool read, it seemed like my kind of thing, so I thought I would go ahead and grab it. And I got it for a really good price, it was around 60 bucks, I think through cheap graphic novels. I'm not sure if they have any more copies, but I mean, it's going out of print. You might as well grab it while you can before it gets into, like, stupid money. So, yeah, I picked up Ecstatic. I'm really excited to read it. Um, it's heavy. I'm gonna put it down. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to be moving on to books. Welcome! If you hit that little button and you only wanted to see my book haul, we are happy to have you. If you're really not interested in my book haul, then click this right here and it'll take you right to the end where I can give you my little informational pitch. Let's move on into the books. The first thing that I picked up was 100,000 Kingdoms by N.K. Jameson. Um, the reason I picked this up is because N.K. Jameson is a female fantasy author. She is African American and so is the main character in this book, female African American. And that is not something you see in a lot of fantasy. So I thought I'd give her a go. I've heard nothing but fabulous, fabulous things about this book. Basically, from what I understand, the gods in this world are slaves and there's like a weird magic system that's wrapped around that fact and our heroine is like some kind of surf slave I don't think she's a god but she's in some kind of like lower class situation and things go from there it sounded really interesting I'm all for giving authors in minority groups a chance I really wanted to check this out excited I have it Okay, fair warning, the rest of my haul is going to be a lot darker. For some reason I got it into my head that I wanted to read like darker horror thriller type things, so that's what I picked up. So there's a, definitely a theme going on. The next thing that I have to show you is Midwinter Blood by Marcus Sedgwick. All I know is that it's like an anthology of connected stories that are all very creepy and dark and, I don't know, scary? <laughs> So yeah, it has won the Prince Award, which is a good sign, and I'm excited to read it, pick it up. I don't really know very much about it except that everybody loves it and that it's super creepy, so I thought I'd give it a shot. Alright, the next thing I got is I Am Not a Serial Killer by Dan Wells. Dan Wells is an author who does a podcast with Brandon Sanderson. Um, I got to take a class with Brandon Sanderson last semester, and obviously Brandon talked about this book quite a bit. He used it as an example in a lot of his lectures just because it was something that he had read and workshopped with Dan and had an easy grasp of. Um, Basically, I've heard about this book an awful lot from an awful lot of, awful lot of people. The podcast that he does, um, Writing Excuses, is really, really great. I've listened to it quite a bit, so I know Dan's voice at least. From what I understand, it is from the perspective of John Wayne Cleaver. He is a sociopath, think like Dexter type of thing. He doesn't want to be a sort of manic serial killer, so he uses his intense need to kill for good, I guess, or he tries to. So people start dying in his town and he kind of goes on the hunt and he finds sort of like mysterious otherworldly reasons why these people are dying and he uses his serial killer instincts to deal with the problem, I guess. Um, I think the whole point of this is like a monster hunting a monster type of a thing, uh, which I I'm interested in. So yeah, here you go. I'm not a serial killer, Dan Wells. I guess check it out if you want to. The next thing I picked up was The Coldest Girl in Cold Town by Holly Black. Basically, in it's like an alt America where there are places called cold towns where like they put they're like segregation camps kind of and they put like vampires and monsters and stuff in there to keep them out of regular population and for some reason this girl is forced to go into a cold town to help her friends or help like her boyfriend I guess um, 
I'm not quite sure what the plot is. I kind of want to go into it blind because I've heard such good things about this. Um, but basically the whole point is when you go into a cold, ca cold town, you cannot come back out. So she goes in and I guess she has to deal with the consequences. It sounds interesting. I've read a little bit of Holly Black when I was like a lot younger in like high school and I remember liking it, but my tastes have changed a lot and have, I think, matured quite a bit. So I'm wondering if she's still going to hold up. I hope she does. The premise of this sounds really interesting and I am curious to see what it's like. Oh, John Green blurbed the cover. No one writes like Holly Black. Cold Town is one of my all-time favorite fantasy novel settings. Cool. John Green says it's good, then I guess I'd believe him. Okay, so the last thing I picked up was The Monstromologist by Rick Yancey. Um, I don't know how to pitch this book. Okay, there's a boy, he's an apprentice for a monster hunter, and yeah, he hunts monsters. And basically the idea is that like in one of the first chapters, a woman who is getting eaten by a monster, like she is in the monster's like mouth and getting chewed, shows up at their doorstep and is like, help me, help me, I guess. I, I don't know. It's supposed to be like incredibly dark and creepy and really, really like goes there for like a YA, I think this is YA, for like a YA read. People say it's good. I'm excited to try it. Again, I don't know why. I just wanted to read creepy things. Alright guys, that's the end of my haul. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have read any of the things I hauled or maybe want me to read anything first and get back to you on it, please leave that in the comments down below. I love hearing from you guys. Um, if you like this video, I hope you will subscribe. I hope you will like it. I hope you will share it with your friends. Those likes and subscribes are always appreciated. And as always, stay nerdy.